Welcome to the training for the NPCA Marketing Toolkit. My name is Pam Aiello. I'm with Symantle. We are a marketing communications firm that helped the marketing task force build the kit that you're about to hear about today. The first thing I'd like to do is to talk about kind of what it is that we're going to try to accomplish today, kind of do a level set. So here are some key objectives for what we hope you'll be able to do at the end of this session. First of all, you'll be able to describe how an effective marketing piece can positively influence a specifier's decision-making process. And that's really what the marketing toolkit is all about, is about helping you create influence with your specific target audiences. You'll be able to explain how NPCA's marketing toolkit can be used to create effective marketing pieces. And you're actually going to see some real examples of how the toolkit can be used. Finally, you'll be able to incorporate NPCA's marketing toolkit into an existing marketing campaign or brand, obviously your own marketing campaigns or brands for your company. So let's get started. I'd like to start right here with the question, because I'm sure you're probably asking this, is do I really need marketing? And I would absolutely argue, yes, you do. Marketing is one of the ways that you can absolutely influence the decision-making process of your specific targets. Isn't it interesting that on paper, precast is often the superior product, but it's not always chosen. Why is that? Well, in some instances, it might be due to budget or timeline. Uh, it's possible that it's based on specific project needs or what the specifier perceives to be their specific project needs about work or follow-up. But we've done a lot of research out there in the marketplace for you. And what we believe is that in a lot of instances, the reason that precast isn't being chosen is actually due to perceptions that are out there in the market and that those perceptions are actually influencing preference. Let's take a look real quickly here at kind of an overview at some of the research that we've been conducting for over a year now. And that research has been conducted specifically in the marketplace. So we have been around the country talking specifically to specifiers, we've talked to product experts, and we've actually talked to membership so that we can be confident that we have a really accurate snapshot of what the perceptions are of precast out there in the marketplace. If you look at these three charts, one of the things that you'll see is that specifiers feel that they are very familiar with precast. If you compare it to the charts over on the right with fiberglass and plastics and you look at precast, it's almost a dilemma where they feel like we're too familiar. Um, the question is, is that view, if they are really that confident that they know about the precast product and they know about its capabilities, the, the core question is, is, is that familiarity, is it built on the information that we want them to have? Interestingly enough, the specifiers in our study um, felt that precast was strong and durable, but also said that it's more conventional than imaginative and it did not score highly on versatility. So one of the things that this data pointed us to is that we have the opportunity to show the specifiers what precast is all about. And one of the best ways for us to do that is through marketing and information and getting the information out there so that we can start to shift some of those perceptions. Additionally, it's critically important that we put our message out there so that others are not providing the voice of precast to our customers. So just like any other product on the marketplace, there is clearly competition. And the competition clearly wants them to choose them over precast product. What we want to do is we want to use marketing and information to make sure that our target audience has exactly 
the correct information that they need to make good buying decisions. A couple of examples that I'll go through quickly with you from our research. We talked to a, a structural engineer in the Northwest who could have actually been a walking advertisement for Tilt Up. And when we questioned him further, what was really interesting was that his experience with the product was limited, but most of his information about the product had actually come from materials that had been provided to him. So he had become an advocate based upon his marketing education. The other thing that I'd like to talk about in this particular bucket about the voice of precast that's out there is that Anybody can really put any kind of information out there on the internet. I'm sure that you are well aware of that with your own websites or um, in your regions with your competitive websites. Uh, we looked at a very small competitive website that was um, selling septic tanks and positioning the septic tank product. And interestingly enough, they had lots of bullet points listed on their website that talked about why precast or why concrete product was not the best choice. Points that were true, not so much, not so accurate. So one of the things that we can do with marketing, one of the ways that we can help get specifiers into the, into the buying mindset that we want them in is that we can provide good and accurate information. And what our research indicated is that there is a gap, there is a need to get that information out there. The final highlight that I'd like to take from the research is we found that specifiers articulated that there are challenges or issues that they face which others may not be faced with. In other words, they think that their particular challenges are unique. And what's great about this marketing strategy is that the marketing toolkit helps bring the, the key points that we need to make to the market, but it's in your hands. You are there. You are local. You are one-on-one, -on -one, and you know exactly what those challenges are. So the combination of a good messaging platform with your local expertise means that our marketing efforts are positioned perfectly to have the kind of impact that we want them to have. So perception. We've been talking about perception. How is it that marketing influences our perceptions? Well, let's talk about that for a minute, and let's, let's step back and take a little look at that, maybe as consumers, and then apply that specifically to our businesses. You see here that I have a variety of brands up on the screen. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Adidas, Nike, Walmart, Target, Hardee's, McDonald's. Every single one of those companies I'm sure you're familiar with. I'm actually also probably sure that you may have a preference in one or more of these categories based on your experience or based on what you know about that company. We have the opportunity to do exactly the same thing in the marketplace that these companies do by putting information out there, by carrying consistent, pervasive marketing messages we can shape the way that our audience thinks about precast in exactly the same way that Coca-Cola and Pepsi shape how people feel about soft drinks or how Walmart and Target shape the way people feel about a discounted money-saving shopping experience. So how is it exactly that major brands and major marketing efforts do that? Well. They sort of have a key set of best practices, and I want to talk with you about those today because they are the very same best practices that we have applied to the development of the marketing toolkit. The key attributes of marketing that marketers use in order to have the level of influence they want are, are fall into four categories, clarity, consistency, character, and commitment. I call them the four C's. 
I have another set of four C's that I often talk about when I'm shopping for diamonds, but we're not going to cover those today. <laughs> so let's get started and talk about the four C's of marketing. The very first one is clarity, and that is very straightforward. It's all about being clear about what it is about your brand or your product that differentiates it in the marketplace. I brought forward Volvo here because Volvo has differentiated itself, particularly in the automotive industry, based on one core competency. And I'm sure you know what that is. Yep, you're right, that would be safety. Everything that they do, all of their marketing, has served to differentiate them from other automotive choices based on the fact that if you really care about safety and you want a safe vehicle for your family, Volvo is the leader. They also have taken a, a step further, and in most recent years, they've spent a lot of time putting information out there about safety technology and positioning themselves as a safety technology leader which again contributes to that whole clear message of Volvo equals safety. The next thing that brands do, the next best practice, is about consistency. So we need to be clear. We want everybody to understand clearly what it is that we stand for. But, but that's not enough. There is so much clutter out there in the marketplace and so many different messages and so much communication that people are getting from a variety of channels. It is really critically important that as a brand or as a product, you say the same things over and over again because that's how you break through. That's how you can be pervasive. I use GE here as an example because General Electric has consistently carried their message across industries, across markets, uh, began with we bring good things to life, and now most recently they have evolved that position and that messaging platform into imagination at work. And again, they're incredibly consistent, whether on the consumer level or whether on the business to business level or the commercial level, GE's message is consistent across the board. The third best practice that I want to talk about is character. And character is really about what you stand for. It's about your values. I use Walt Disney here because when people look at, at Disney and they look at Disney as a corporation, um, always people talk about that Disney is really focused on making people happy and that they have a, a good, clear set of values. What's interesting about character is that a lot of times this is sort of the silent best practice. You don't necessarily recognize it until somebody violates it or does something that's completely out of character for their brand. The last best practice that I want to talk about is commitment. And this is the tough one. This is the hard one. This is the thing that makes marketing sort of an elusive animal because at the end of the day, you just have to keep after it. There are so many messages. Things change so quickly today. There's so much information available on an ongoing basis, not only just in what you can provide to your customers and your target audience, but what others can provide. So it becomes incredibly important that you stay with a marketing strategy and that you provide it in all the same places that you, that you keep that clarity and consistency coming over time. Really strong brands are built over the long term. They don't happen overnight. It happens over a period of time. I use Starbucks here because their journey has been really unique in that when the Starbucks people very first started out going to venture capitalists, I think the stories are so funny because the very first groups of people that they went after for in venture capital laughed them out of the room and said, are you serious? You're going to get people to pay four bucks for a cup of coffee? Really? Really? Well, interestingly enough, Starbucks has proven them very wrong. And the strength of the Starbucks brand has continued because over time, 
they have continued to be committed to delivering the Starbucks experience, not only to customers, but actually to employees and the world. So if you look at those in total, those are all sort of the best practices that help brands, that help products actually get out there and create their own position in the marketplace and to hang on to that position. So let me ask you this, now that we've sort of talked about the perceptions that are in the marketplace and we've talked about these best practices, are there times that you have lost precast bids to competitive product? If you just take a moment, I bet you can think of a couple. The other question that I'd like you to ask yourself as you're thinking about that, maybe thinking about the perceptions that we talked about that have come out of the market research that we've done, um, did any of those kinds of perceptions maybe come into play? So think about those toughest challenges. And the other thing I'd like you then to think about is when you think about those challenges that you have out there in the marketplace, are there challenges then that if we think about clarity, consistency, character, and commitment, that marketing just might be able to help you impact? So if you have a challenge with somebody who really doesn't understand um, how versatile precast can be. Could marketing help you in that effort? Absolutely. If you have a marketing challenge that's all about price, you know, we don't want to be in a position where we are forced to compete solely on price. We want to compete based on total life cycle value of the product. Can marketing help us take that message out to our target audience? Absolutely. And when you have marketing combined with your specific efforts and your specific interactions with customers, that is just about the perfect combination to win more work and sell more precast. So with all of that in mind, sort of laying the groundwork, let's talk for a minute about the marketing toolkit and how it's going to help you accomplish some of those goals. You know, uh, before we get into some of these specifics that are included in the kit, you might think for a minute about the things that, that keep you um, from pursuing your marketing campaigns. You know, marketing is, is a tough nut these days. We talked about that it requires time and it requires commitment. And now that, that digital media has exploded on the scene, the internet has exploded on the scene, there are lots of different elements to a marketing campaign and a marketing strategy that you have to know about. And navigating your way through that can actually present some challenges. Time is always something um, that marketing requires. And a lot of times, carving out the time to think about your marketing or to think about a marketing campaign is, is just not possible. It's hard to get that that time to step back and look at it holistically. Budget, you know, but budgets are required to make marketing campaigns come to life and to have them be the kind of marketing campaign that you want to represent your company. Well, the good news is, is that in our research, we talked to all of you about all of those challenges and more, and the things that you see on this marketing toolkit list are all specifically built to help you overcome those challenges, to make it easy for you to do marketing. And secondly, what I want to emphasize is, is that everything that you're going to see in the toolkit is all based on the market research. All of it came right out of our conversations with specifiers and engineers and product experts and members. So it is relevant and it is real world. Included in the marketing toolkit are the campaign guidelines, and we're going to spend some time talking about the precast campaign because it provides the platform for everything that we're doing. It includes a message matrix and talking points, which are critical to help educate our, um, our target customers and our target market, and for us to, again, be clear and consistent. It includes imagery. It includes ad templates. It includes case studies. It includes a template for a customizable leave behind, 
and it includes a marketing video. So when you look at the marketing toolkit in total, there is really something for everybody. So let's dive in. Let's talk about the Take a New Look at Precast campaign. This is a campaign that is really based on a, the marketing research that we just talked about up front. And remember those charts that I showed you that showed that a lot of the target audience and a lot of our specifiers feel like they already know about Precast. They feel like they've got that down. They understand. I don't, I don't really need you to tell me about that because I already know that. Well, what this campaign suggests is that they take a new look at Precast. Precast, excuse me. The positioning statement, take a new look at Precast, is all about that. The position statement encourages the audience to take a new look and see all the new things that Precast can do. The campaign has messaging that's based in four areas, and these we derived from the research about areas that we should emphasize. They are looks, that precast has unlimited design possibilities, brains, which means that precast can help your target audience and your customers make really smart use of their budget, Brawn, which talks about the proven, durable, lasting impression that precast can make. And finally, class, which is the whole element of precast being sustainable and strong. Campaign development also is it just it's not just a position and it's not just the key messaging points. It also includes topography and selecting type. And this, again, remember how we talked about um, in our best practices that character is kind of one of those things that, that is, is kind of a silent best practice. You really don't notice it until somebody does something to violate it. Typography is kind of the same way. You know, we don't always pay a lot of attention to it. We don't necessarily think about it. But it is actually critical in making an impression. For example, um, I do a lot of work for Caterpillar. And, you know, if, if you thought about Caterpillar and the Caterpillar line of equipment and the Caterpillar brand, it would seem completely out of character to see a Caterpillar ad that had very frilly, you know, cursive, um, lightweight type because it doesn't go with the brand. It, it isn't what they're marketing. Caterpillar is strong and grr. Well, in this instance, what we wanted to do was to select typography that reflected the characteristics of precast that we're talking about. So the, the font or the typeface that was selected is Museo Sans 900 and Museo Sans. And the beauty of these typefaces is that for headlines and subheads, it gives you a strong and solid but modern look. Not not old-fashioned, but a very modern, strong sort of appeal. And for the subheads and body copy, you have a typeface that is easy to read, and yet it's a very contemporary style. So, so the idea here is strategically is that your typography absolutely aligns with your positioning statement of take a new look at precast. The campaign also laid the foundation for photography and imagery. And what you'll see in the images is that the, the images position the product as a hero, larger than life, strong, and, and visually interesting. So that the composition of all of these things show you precast product in an interesting way or at an unexpected angle, like this angle here. Again take a new look. Additionally, for the campaign, um, color and the palette also is critical because that's what helps unify your look. So included in the Take a New Look at Precast campaign is a color palette that is primarily gray and contrasting grays. One of the things that we talked about is that we didn't want um, 
the choice of gray to end up feeling um, flat or just two-dimensional. So you'll see in a lot of the treatments that it has a very dimensional look and a very high contrast look. But that represents the product. The two accent colors are blue and green. And you can see up here on the right these little Pantone chips. Pantone is, is a color formulation system, like the, like the paint chips that you would get at Menards that, that tell the paint mixer exactly what color you want your wall to be. This is exactly the same for print and for digital marketing applications. And so here it shows you in print and on the web exactly um, what those color combinations need to be. The bars on the bottom show you sort of how the proportion ought to go. So proportionately, when we're in the Take a New Look at Precast industry level campaign, gray is our, the grays, the contrasting grays are our predominant colors. Blue becomes our secondary color. And the green accent is, is probably the one that is the accent color. It is less prevalent than the blue or the gray. And blue and green also tie into our association colors. And the other reason that we like them as a selection is because they also communicate strength and they're really good sustainability types of colors. So all together, when you get your marketing toolkit, you are going to get complete guidance on the Take a New Look at Precast campaign. You'll get information about the positioning statement, the messaging, the typography, uh, color, texture, and actually implementation in even greater detail than what I've covered with you here. So that's the campaign that lays the foundation. Now let's talk about some of these specific tools that are going to be available to you when you get your kit and how you might be able to use them for your business. The very first thing that I want to talk about that's included that I think is so very useful and important is the messaging matrix and the talking points. Uh, the talking points are the four categories that we talked about just a moment ago, um, where we talked about looks, brains, brawn, and class. And the message matrix was actually crafted right out of the research that we did with the specifiers and the product experts and the membership. So the beauty of that is, is that for, eight, for the eight key products, you get key messaging points that are all in one location so that you can go look and you can see on different features, um, on different types of challenges for each one of those products. Um, Advertising research shows us that consistent messaging has a high correlation to recall and retention. So one of the things that we're trying to build up with the message matrix and the talking points is consistent messaging across the board. Because one of the things that we know is that the more pervasive a message is, remember we talked about that as a best practice, the more pervasive it is, the more influence it has. So if we have hundreds, thousands of precasters across the country all sharing the same message points in the same way and communicating the same message, we will have a greater level of influence. And the other thing that we talked about um, earlier in our presentation here when we talked about perception, we know that information and marketing has the ability to impact perception. So if we can all get our messages aligned, we have the ability to start moving that needle for our specifiers in particular to start seeing precast in a new way. This is a page right out of the messaging matrix, and this is the first page where it talks about overall messaging. But I want you to notice how easy this is to use. If you look over here on the left, here is sort of our category. And after overall messaging, it goes into specific products like septic tanks or manholes. And then in each column, there are messaging points underneath each one of these topics. So durability and strength versatility, quality control, efficiency, other message points that came right out of the research. And then finally, um, there's a column over here that's about challenges. And it's actually messaging points there that were offered up by experts that talk about how 
different competitive challenges can be addressed in a really effective way. This is just a couple of pages that shows you how the talking points look when you get them in the kit. Again, a higher level messaging platform, but really easy, bulleted, quick, easy reference that you can use in just about any materials that you would prepare. Also included in the marketing toolkit are campaign images. And there are eight key campaign images. They cover key product areas. I do want to point out you'll have a hard time noticing it, they are actually rendered images, not actual photographs. Um, that being because we wanted to represent product, but we didn't want people to get too into the minutia of where is this, who did this, those kinds of discussions. Again, we wanted to use it to represent the product and get people to think about taking a new look. Um, it provides the main image, imagery, these eight images, for all of the marketing templates. Um, and again, they incorporate the interesting angles that we talked about for taking a look at precast. Here are those eight rendered images. You'll see here we have a utility vault, we have a curb inlet, we have a box culvert, a septic tank, a pipe shot, a retaining wall, an architectural image, and, of course, a manhole at this cool um, angle. All eight of these are included in the marketing toolkit, and they're included um, in a way so that you can absolutely just use them and drop them into the templates. So let's get on to the templates, and let's talk about the ad templates. Before I show them to you, I did want to talk about a couple of things about using ad templates because templates make it really easy and the templates that have been included in the kit make it so simple. They range from a template that is so put together that you could actually just add your company and your information and you're good to go to giving you the flexibility to change out photographs and add your own um, product or case study information. But before you do any of that, before you grab a template and go, it is critically important that you think about why it is you're going to place an ad or what the purpose of an ad might be. I mean, whether you're, you're inserting it into a local magazine or a regional publication or a program for your daughter's high school musical, it is really critical that you know who the audience is, what level of awareness, awareness that you're trying to create, what action do you want them to take as a result of that ad? Do you expect a phone call? Do you expect them to go to your website? Do you expect them to just read it and go, hmm, you need to be clear from the very get-go what it is you are trying to accomplish with any particular ad. Because that's how you create exactly the right message. Because your message should drive them to the action that you want them to take. It also helps you make sure that you choose the right channels or that you choose the right places to place that particular ad. It helps you consistent, consistently portray your brand. And finally, the other thing that it does to do that upfront thinking is it makes sure that you are shaping their perceptions in exactly the way that you want them to be shaped. So let's take a look. This is a one-page template. And I want you to just study this for just a moment. Um, the, the good news is, is that these files are available to you in the kit in both InDesign and Microsoft Word, and they're in four common sizes. Um, and you have all the elements here that you need. You'll also see in the kit that you actually have templates where the images have already been included, and there's actually um, messaging that comes, again, right out of our research, right out of the messaging matrix that you can utilize. And this really is sort of follow the numbers and follow the dots. You'll see my little cursor here pointing out the, the red squares. At each red square, you have an opportunity to include information in this ad or modify it to fit your specific needs. So for example, over here on the left, here's number one, and insert your logo here. 
literally. Just grab your logo and insert it here. Number two is actually the image. You may use the image that's there, or if you want to have another image included, um, you can also do that. But in the toolkit, the beauty of it is they are all already there for your use. You'll notice here at the bottom, if I, if I drop down to number six, fill in your company's contact information. So here's your company name, your company phone number, and your email and or website address. Also included in the toolkit are case studies. The reason that we included uh, general case studies are, is, is really twofold. Um, one, because case studies are a great way to generate interest. People love reading about how other people do the same kind of work. They're fascinated by examples of you know, how projects were done or how people saved money. The other thing that case studies do for you is they are a great way to bring value to life because they show how you are relevant to your customer. They build your credibility and they make value really tangible because you can say, I'm not just saying that this is how it works. Here is a great example of a particular project where we actually put this into practice. Included in the kit are actually written case studies. Now, we recognize that, that things are very specific in your markets and in your local areas and that your customers have very specific needs. So one of the reasons that we put these in here was to actually provide you with a road map. Um, you're certainly more than welcome to use the case studies that have been provided or adapt them to, to your particular style or region, but what we're hoping is that you can use these as sort of a template and that you can build your own case studies and be able to use them in the materials. So here's, here's just a quick look at a case study that's included in the kit for rapid roadway repair. And you'll see that it's broken out into key areas, you know, the situation, the solution, but it gives you a really great idea of how you can build your own case studies to make them interesting and relevant to your customers. So if that isn't enough, if you don't have enough already with your head spinning about all the different ways that you can take this marketing toolkit into your market, um, there's also a customizable leave behind template included in the kit. And customizable leave behinds are absolutely fantastic tools because um, they they are critical for recall, and recall is critical to perception. Um, you want to be there with that specifier. You want that specifier or that other target customer to have your information at their fingertips whenever they need it. The other thing I like about Leave Behinds is that it's a great way to, to really up your professional game. You know, marketing is bigger than just advertising. Every single touch point that you have with a customer is actually a marketing opportunity. And a customizable leave behind is one way that you can adapt to your specific market, your product, and the specific style of your brand. Here is an example of the customizable leave behind. This is, a, this is actually a one-pager. And you'll notice here that we have the same uh, follow the dots. Um, number one, insert your logo here. Number two, this is all about the image. You'll notice down here is all about promoting a product. So if you go to number six, as you move down the page here, the products overview, you can insert your own product images and have descriptions of them so that you can promote specific products to your specific audience. And then on the flip side over here, you'll notice that in seven, you can provide additional copy and bullets to support the offerings that might be about what you or your company does. Um, and that on the far right, we've taken this sidebar and turned it into an opportunity um, to create your very own case study. 
the great thing about this is is that you have multiple layout options included in the kit. So here is a four page option and this you'll see here you can choose your cover and then as you go through again here are places where you can provide images and products you can insert your your um, company bullets up here on this side and then over here on the far right again the opportunity to create a case study we're even suggesting here that you might insert a key fact about precast um, that might be a good reminder or something that you know a particular customer should be interested in but again InDesign files word files completely templatized so you can do the minimum or you can do the maximum. It's entirely up to what you need to get to your target audience in your marketplace. Also, what one of the things that I am really excited about in the marketing toolkit is the marketing video. And this video, again, uh, based to address the key points of the campaign platform, take a new look at Precast, and now it gives you a video asset that you can use in any number of ways, maybe on your website, maybe for a meeting opener, uh, maybe at a small show where you want it to play. So let's take a look at the campaign video. In the past, precast concrete was primarily considered a basic utilitarian building material. It wasn't considered cutting edge or versatile for a wide range of applications. Since then, the 1100 companies that make up the National Precast Concrete Association have redefined our product and turned it into the total package with attributes you might not expect. Precast is a versatile building material with unlimited design possibilities. It makes smart use of your budget in all phases of your project, saving you money before the build because it's a pre-constructed product, during the build because it requires less labor, and after the build because it costs less to maintain. Precast is a proven, durable material that leaves a lasting impression and a quality product manufactured to meet the highest standards. So you can be confident that whatever you're building, it will be environmentally sustainable and strong. So take a new look at Precast and visit precast.org today. That is the take a new look at Precast video and it does a great job of hitting on all the key points and creating some visual excitement for the Precast product. So my next question that I'm going to put up in front of you here is how well does it work? We thought you might ask that question. It sounds really great, Pam. I know you based it on research and making it relevant to the real world, but can people really take this toolkit and turn it into marketing? My answer for you is absolutely positively they can and they have. Thanks to some of your members who were willing to be first, first, um, the first wave of marketing implementation, we actually have some examples here to show you that were created with the templates for the marketing toolkit. Here's an example using the two page template from Bartow. And what I love about this is that you'll notice here they inserted their own photographs and they followed the path very nicely that they showed some interesting angles, um, some unique points of view to follow the whole campaign idea of take a new look at precast. They've got their information here and they actually took that right sidebar and implemented and included their own case study. This is actually a direct pickup of a one-page template that was produced by Ganey Concrete Products. And what's interesting here is this is sort of um, the industry level for them. So they picked up an ad template, they put their logo in, they put their information in, they're good to go. If you look at this ad, also from Ganey Concrete Product, 
you will see that what they've done is taken the take a new look at precast positioning statement and incorporated it into a very specific marketing campaign of their own. This is a more corporate approach to using the same two-page template um, that Kirk at NPCA took and actually applied to NPCA information. We have this example from Shea Concrete Products that shows you how they're taking the elements of the toolkit and including it here in their website and then using it to create digital banner ads. In all of these examples, the thing that I want to point out to you is that some of these examples were built in InDesign. Some of these examples were built in Microsoft Word. Some of these examples were built by design professionals. Some of these examples were built by precasters themselves. And as you look across the examples that we just showed you, you can't tell the difference. The clarity, the consistency, all comes forward. And you can see at the industry level the consistency that we're promoting for Take a New Look at Precast, but you've also seen examples that show then how it can be incorporated into existing marketing campaigns. And the really good news is that when you get the marketing toolkit, you'll have all sorts of support available to you. There will be information, there are resources available to you at precast.org slash education. So as you start to use the kit, as you have questions, as you need more information, it's all readily available to you right at your fingertips on the website. How do you get a marketing toolkit? We thought you might want to know that as well. Well, all you have to do is complete the training. So you are on your way. Complete the training and you will receive a marketing toolkit. It comes on a flash drive right to your desk where you can plug it in and you can begin using the marketing materials included in the kit. So that concludes our training for the NPCA marketing toolkit. I think, I think I'll hope that you're as excited about the opportunities that the toolkit brings to you as I am. So very quickly, I just want to review our objectives. I think, I think we have achieved them all today. Um, based on the information that we provided, I think you know how to describe an effect, how a marketing piece can positively influence a specifier's decision-making process, especially since we took a deep dive uh, or, or talk, took a look at some highlights from our, from our study that we did with specifiers in the marketplace. And we talked about some best practices for marketing pieces. I think you can explain how NPCA's marketing toolkit can be used to create effective marketing pieces because you've seen the proof. You've seen the proof in the pudding. And finally, I think you have a really good idea about how to incorporate NPCA's marketing toolkit into your existing marketing campaigns and brands. So just to wrap it all up, the NPCA Marketing Toolkit positions our industry and our companies in a new light. Take a new look at Precast. It is a way and a means for each of us to advocate for the industry as well as for our own products and our own companies. It's a way to, to remind us and to emphasize that marketing can help us increase our market share and unify our 